is CBS 47 Eyewitness News in high definition. Next to noon, team coverage from both ends of the state where major wildfires are leading to a state of emergency and the mandatory evacuations as firefighters scramble to stop the flames. This is CBS 47 Eyewitness News at noon in high definition. When I came back this morning to look at everything, I mean, get one house, skip ours, go to another, it's just completely random. Clint Fox is one of the lucky ones. His house is still standing, but for many others, left after three major wildfires quickly spread. I'm Joey Horta. We have team coverage on this breaking news today from both ends of the state. We begin in Southern California, where two big fires are taking a toll now. The Hill Fire and the Woolsey Fire, both burning in Ventura and L.A. counties. Cal Fire says Woolsey is now 8,000 acres. CBS 47's Dennis Valera is there live, where tens of thousands of homes are under threat now. And the city of Malibu under evacuation orders. Dennis? Hey, Joey, yeah, all of these evacuations, I think it just shows exactly how serious the situation is over here. Now, there's a lot of things keeping crews back and getting containment. As you can tell in the trees, wind really making things difficult for crews to get, as I said, a good grip on this fire. Now, we're going to cut to some video that we shot last night, close to midnight. The Woolsey Fire creeping on the ridge around Thousand Oaks and Simi Valley areas. Now, as we said, we no homes have gotten blazed by this fire and it's causing some serious evacuations in Moore Park. We ran into many of them at Denny's. One of them, Mark Gurich, is worried about his home of 20 years, but he's just looking out for everyone's safety. We got a lot of a lot of memories and feelings there, but as long as nobody's hurt, and that's that's what we really care about. So we just get everybody out and then everything else can be rebuilt if need be. Gurich went on to say how things have really been rough in the area lately, referencing how the borderline shooting, it just happened on Wednesday and now these fires. He's saying his neighbors will rebuild. Live here in Moore Park, Dennis Valera, CBS 47 Eyewitness News. All right, Dennis, thanks for that update. We'll hear back from him later on. And right now, Merced firefighters are among the many crews up there battling the campfire that's burning in Butte County. Now more than 70,000 acres, nearly destroying the entire town of Paradise, where 27,000 people call home. Cal Fire says people have died. They don't know yet how many. David Begno is on the fire lines tracking it all. It has been 24 hours since the fire exploded here in Northern California, and it is still windy. That's a storage center behind me that is burning, and we've been hearing explosions. That's why we're walking away. Listen, over the last 24 hours, there have been harrowing accounts of people literally abandoning their vehicles and getting out to run for their lives. Heavenly Father, please help us. Surrounded by walls of flames, whipped by winds of 50 miles per hour, people drove through hell trying to escape. Their homes and those of their neighbors burned to the ground. And everything is burning up around us. The campfire exploded in intensity, filling the sky with toxic smoke. Oh my God. That could be seen from San Francisco, which is nearly 150 miles away. So we grabbed our animals and some food and some clothes and we're getting the heck out of here. There was very little time for the 27,000 people who live in paradise to evacuate. Everything was ignited. By the time I, I got out of my house, it was like everything was on fire. Just after 1 a.m., Cal Fire District Chief John Cox escorted us into the town. It is a disaster. We saw those cars that people abandoned as they felt trapped and decided to run. Some people took refuge in concrete parking lots, which proved to be lifesavers. Officials tell us firefighters used their own shelter kits to shield civilians from the flames. We're talking devastated. That's Cal Fire Captain Scott McLean. The town center is completely on the ground. On the uh, south side as well as the north side has been hit very hard as well. I hope people got up. I woke up all my neighbors, got them out of bed. Next thing you know, their house is on fire. I saved their lives. Dwayne D'Amico, a retired engineer, escaped with his dog. I don't think there's not going to be a home left in paradise. I don't know. When I left, it was all on fire. 
David Begno reporting and what we know, what we do not know that is, is how many people may have died in their homes because they could not get out fast enough. At last check, the campfire is 5% contained. You are looking at a fire NATO caused by the strong winds up there in Butte County. The threat of dry and windy conditions still a big problem right now. For the latest weather alerts, let's get to Anthony Bailey. Yeah, watching those videos are always so impressive. Fires kind of bring with them their own weather systems to them. And we're seeing those fire like conditions or right, fire ripe conditions all across the state in multiple locations, including not far from our area. In fact, just southeast of the Porterville area, we do have a fire weather warning that stays in place through 10 o'clock tonight. You're talking about extremely low humidity and strong winds blowing through the area. In addition to that, we're also going to see the first round of freezes for parts of the valley floor a little further south of us. A hard freeze warning. That's the area you see in purple there from Ridgecrest stretching through the Kern County area. Now, Southern California also seeing a fair amount of both fire weather and freezing issues there as well. Stay with us. We'll be tracking what you can expect over the weekend coming up.